All right, guys. So Scoutmaster Russ here again, and uh, for Troop One out of Everett, Washington, the question that was posed to me today was, how does a troop become a boy-led troop? Well, it's really simple. Let it become a boy-led troop. The one thing that tends to always get in the way of so boys being successful at becoming a boy-led troop is us, the adults. We get to have so much fun. We get to be a part of these great organizations, and we start having so much fun, and we get tied up in it, that we forget that the boys own the troop. We should allow them to make decisions. And we should also allow them to fail. As long as it doesn't hurt them or hurt somebody else, failing is okay. It's really okay to fail. We often learn our best lessons when we fail and we learn from it, make that correction, and move on. I've been and had the honor of being a scoutmaster of troops that have been parent-led and also boy-led. And I'm going to tell you right now that the best success has always come from a boy-led Boy Scout troop. They have more fun, they own the troop, they take more pride in it, they advance quicker, and they grow quicker. When parents get involved, and, and I, I don't even know how to sugarcoat this, we tend to screw it up for the boys. We just tend to screw it up for them. We tend to take over projects. We tend to want to do things for them as opposed to teach them. Uh, we don't allow them fail. Therefore, when they succeed, we want to own their success. And kids a mile away will figure out eventually that if we made a campfire for them or got it started and all they did was blow on it, they're going to know they didn't make that fire or sharpen that knife or split that wood or set up that tent. Whatever the case might be. So, if you're a scoutmaster out there and you're really wondering, how do I make this happen? Here's the thing you need to do. Partner with your parents. Explain to them the vision of patrol method and Boy Scout, boy-led troops. Utilize the power of the PLC, the patrol leader, committee, or council, and figure out the plan. Allow them to fail. Allow them to learn. Because if you don't do that, the troop's never going to come around. Now, another question was posed via my email. It comes from a scoutmaster in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And no, it's not my old, my buddy, Scott. It was actually from another one out there that said, I have parents that consistently get in the way of the program. Well, let me say this to you. If you have parents that consistently get in the way, then you're not utilizing your parents like you should. Here's the thing about parents. The reason why they're getting in the way is because they want to do something effective. They want to be a part of this organization. It's a fun organization. Boys learn and parents learn. Plus, there's not a lot of organizations out there anymore that allow parents to directly interface with their kids while they're learning something. Let's take team sports, for example. I can't go out on the football field with my son and play football. Now, he gets to do it with his buddies, and I could cheer him from the stands, and I could train with him at home, but the bottom line is, at the end of the day, during the game, it's him and his team on the field. Boy Scouts. I could teach my son to sharpen a knife. I could teach him to handle that knife properly. I could teach him about a blood zone. I could teach him about a boneyard. I could teach him how to use an ax, a saw, a hatchet, and be effective in using it. And I got to do it with him. So the next camp out we go on, we build a boneyard, and then I put him in a position where he could teach a younger scout by utilizing the edge method. That would be example, demonstrate, guide, and enable. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he's a leader. And I still had something to do with it. So to answer your question, you're not utilizing your scout masters properly or your committee or your parental staff. Find out what their skills and talents are. If you have outdoorsmen, mom and dads, then utilize them. Let them use their skills and talents in the outdoors. If you have people that are administrative, put those people that are strong in the right position. You know, one of the best uh, treasures I ever had um, by the name of Melinda, she was fantastic to control the books. She insisted on it being audited. She was so meticulous, that checkbook was to the penny all the time. And you know what? Our troop benefited financially because of her skills and talents that we were never in financial trouble. Not once. 
We always had money to do something because we were well notified. Guess what she did for a living? She was an auditor for the IRS. What better person to make sure that we're following the 503C regulations and rules and to control our finances? And she insisted on having it audited either every quarter or half so that her integrity would never be called into question. Pretty simple, right? <coughs> I'll give you another example. A committee chair I had one time, ma'am, he was suffering. He had no clue what he was doing. He comes to me and says, Russ, I have no idea what I'm doing. I sent him to the training, the whole works. So a little bit later, he became frustrated and quit. And I had to step in for a short time and be the interim um, committee chair. And that is not my talent. My talent is being out here, doing what I love to do in the outdoors. However, one of my scout's grandfathers, who uh, was a salesman, um, came to me and said, you know, I'd be willing to do that for a short time. And to this day, um, Bob was by far one of the best committee chairs I've ever worked with. He kept organized, he utilized his team, and that troop grew and flourished like a troop I've never been in before because it had great leadership. I really hope this answers your question and I hope that you will really take the time to separate the boys from the men, if you will, or the men and the women from the boys and allow the boys to do their thing. You'll be surprised of what they're capable of doing. I'm going to end that with a saying from Baden Powell, Robert Baden Powell, the founder of Scouts as we know it. He said, the more responsibility you give a boy, the more you're going to find they step up. It's true. And when they don't step up, they're in a the wrong position. So, boy led Boy Scout troop or parent led Boy Scout troop. One more fundamental thing you need to think about doing that. A boy led Boy Scout troop tends to grow in numbers, have greater advancement. A parent led Scout troop tends to die. Boys don't want to be there. They start looking for other things to do things that they could do away from it because they don't have room to succeed. So there's my Scout Master moment about that. I would love to hear anything else that you might have to say about it or any notes. I just ask that you keep it courteous. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can email me at scoutmasterrus at gmail.com. I'll try to answer your questions the best I can. I also just want to give you some um, input. There's a book coming out that uh, myself and several other Scout Masters all over the country have are started to write. Uh, called Scouting um, Through the Century. And it's basically scouting for 2015 to 2016 and how scouting should really look, especially in today's age, considering all the things we have to deal with, considering the internet, uh, team sports, boys, girls, gasoline, all the things that pull boys away from the scouting organization. There is a way. And it's very easy. You keep it fun and you keep it interesting. And boys will never want to leave. Scoutmaster Russ, signing off.